I think the reason you invited me to speak today is last week when we were together at Oregon National Laboratory in the US talking about global grid interoperability, I made somewhat passionate statement about scalability of the market and products and how standards are important. So first I need to explain to you what IATECA is and what IATECA came from and how we created the company. So we'd like to see ourselves as a company as a nexus of two major megatrends, electrification of transportation and transformation of the power grid. So now, a bit of a history. Where did it all start for us? So IATECA is only two and a half years old company. We were born maybe in April or March of 2016. But our involvement with the e-mobility and smart charging and all of the aspects of it has probably more than 10 years. You probably have heard that ISO IEC 15118 is using power line communication as basically starting point. Well, that power line communication uh, was called HomePlug Green Phi. I was a part of the team together with my competitors who invented this technology. And that's what used in 15118. So that was one team that we then sold to ST Microelectronics, became part of this company, built a chip that implements this technology. And now we're spin off using this technology to build products. And one point that actually resonated with me very, very well with what Amanda said is patents. And patent trolls that often encroach into the business and try to stop the innovation. One thing that I'm actually very, very proud of at the beginning when we created powerline communication called HomePlug, we created the same idea, a patent pool that amalgamated all of the inventors of this technology together, so we were protected against the world, but also allowed all of us who competed in the space to defend our innovation against patent trolls coming out of the woodworks. And believe me, they came. When the time was right, the market took off, we had a number of litigations. So, as a attacker, we spent 10 years building expertise in power line communication technology, chips, then charging to make it easy for our customers. Today we provide three things. We provide what I would call a motherboard for IBM PC clone with Windows operating system for chargers, and an Amazon storefront like cloud software that enables you to set up operations and essentially manage your business. And of course, one of our famous products is protocol analyzer, allowing us to sniff what is happening between the car and the charger. So why I tell you about my products? It's very simple. If we look at the value chains that exist today, that on one side has electric vehicles of all kinds, motorcycles, buses, trucks, passenger vehicles, and on the other side we have this massive power grid, somehow they need to come together. And they can come together by the means of the charger that is connected to the power infrastructure and vehicle-to-grid integration technology that is connected through cloud and charger itself between those two. A fascinating number. If you look at how many vehicles were sold in 2017, you can realize that in US there were only just about 200,000 vehicles sold. Very small number. But at the same time, the amount of energy that was used in the US market to charge those vehicles was two terawatt hours. So if you think about it, the numbers scale quite, quite well. And when we start talking about now that we have essentially 10% penetration of new vehicle sales in US being electric, that is already very significant. So what is the answer? The answer is very simple. We need smart charging. We need smart charging that is aware of what vehicle needs, what grid needs, what consumer needs. It's a multi-stakeholder environment. How to link it all together is kind of magic. And that's exactly what any substantial advanced technology is. It's indistinguishable from magic. Well, not to pat ourselves as an industry on the back, but I do think that creation of combined charging system and ISO AC 15118 was that type of magic. And you know what, typically when you go on a stage and do a presentation, you take off your badge. I didn't. You know why? I'm very proud to say that today I'm not just a speaker. We're one of the participants of the tenth test event that is taking place here. We have gone around the world for the last six years testing this technology to make sure that it's interoperable, to make sure that it can be produced by 
many, many companies so we can have a competitive, vibrant, biodiverse marketplace. And indeed, if you look at today's market enabled by combined charging system, we see trucks, motorcycles, bicycles, everything that you can imagine running on the infrastructure of combined charging system. So I would like to take an example from the history. How can we learn from the history? What can be essentially extracted from there? How many of you recognize what this card is? Can you raise your hand? So I'm dating myself. All right, I'll remind you. This is a card from a very old device called IBM PC clone. There was a time when people actually sat at the desk in front of desktop PCs with monitors and keyboards. Trust me, there was a time like that. It was in the galaxy far away a long time ago, but it's true. And what happened is very interesting process that reflected on this chart. So in the 80s, Apple invented computer, right? And this computer was something that took the market by the storm because everyone wanted to have this cool device that actually allows you to do something on your own. There were other computers that allowed you to do the same. Apple was probably the best. And then this little gold edge on this card appeared. What it was, it was an IBM PC clone. Why clone? Because they created an open architecture that anybody could take and implement. That architecture combined with an operating system that actually allowed a lot of companies to jump into the market and write a lot of software created an enormous explosion that had driven PC industry. And this ISA bus that allowed multi vendor interoperability. Somebody can make a motherboard, somebody can make a modem. Remember this? Yes, that, that happened many, many years ago, but it enabled connectivity. It enabled computing. It enabled graphics companies to create amazing, amazing vivid pictures on the screen. And all of a sudden, PC market was dominated by IBM PC clones. Within short five years, market share was close to 100%. That's the power of interoperability, open standards, and innovation driven by the competition. We can talk about four freedoms or many more freedoms in mobility, but unless we create a biodiverse marketplace driven by the open standards and fierce competition, we will not have the market. That's the main market driver. That's what creates momentum propelling forward. I'll give you another example from the history. But first, I will ask you, how many of you used uh, hotspots, Wi-Fi hotspots here on the property? Can you raise your hands? Practically everyone, right? So you know Wi-Fi, right? It's in your smartphone. How many of you remember Home RF? I see three hands. You know, there was a time when Wi-Fi was one out of many technologies available for home networking over open air. Home RF actually was dominant technology, but it was a closed standard. Actually, it wasn't even standard. It was a closed specification developed by the group of the companies who tried to fence off themselves from the rest of the competition and grab the market for themselves. And the proof is in the pudding. Only three people, four including myself, in this room understand what home RF is or was. It doesn't exist anymore. So today we're lucky because we actually were able to get to the point when we are standardizing the link between the car and the charger. We already have the massive movement of many, many companies around the globe supporting ICIC 1518, which allows us to be interoperable, allows us to create linkage between the car and the charger, and expose the information from the car forward to e-mobility operator, charge point operators, to utilities, so we can actually start thinking about how to implement demand response, how to work, as an example, with home energy man management systems, how to integrate with convenience of products like driven by Google, Alexa, Apple Home, Samsung Home, and so many others. So make things smart. So why am I here? I'm here for a very simple reason. If you can create a biodiverse marketplace, biodiverse ecosystem, you will get degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom and promise of immobility almost for free. That is a key point. 
The first and foremost important point is the creation of a biodiverse, vibrant ecosystem where every participant of the ecosystem benefits from the participation. And that is not possible without open standard and fierce competition. Why I repeat fierce competition so many times? It's very simple. Competition forces us to think about how can we push envelope of product performance, envelope of customer facing features, envelope of pricing and cost of our products. We're trying to be, become more competitive by reducing the cost of what we produce. We become more competitive by offering better services and better products, better reliability, better performance. Look how quickly the cost of the battery per kilowatt hour has gone from an astronomical number to something that actually makes it possible and affordable to create today's vehicles. That's what interoperability is. That would the power of the open standardization is. It gives us a platform to innovate, compete with each other, and it's a good thing because competition forces us to think forward, think about features and products and services that haven't been offered to the market before and make them reality in a very, very short period of time. So that's why I'm very proud to be part of this movement that created ISO IC 15118 and to carry this badge of participant in the test test symposium that is taking place here. And it's actually amazing to see how many vehicles are coming to market, how many charges are coming to market with this technology. And this is just in a short four or five years since we started doing this, and maybe the tenth years of the development for the technology itself. But it's really fascinating to see how the market is moving forward and how quickly it's happening. You know, uh, maybe a year ago, even two years ago, People used to ask us, well, you're a startup, you're investing all of your time and all of your effort into infrastructure driven by CCS and ICC 15118. But how do you know that it will succeed? What are the chances? We have so many proprietary implementations, we have other technologies out there in the market that compete with CCS and ISO IC 15118. How do we know that this is exactly the right technology, the right thing for the market, and something that anyone should do? Well, my answer is very simple. Maybe this is a sign of the future. What do you think? Thank you very much.